that button will turn it off. It's Thanks. running now. Okay. Cool. All right. Morning. Hot dog. Oh, we got a full house this morning, don't we? Did somebody put a ladder up there for me? That's what it's for. Let me see if I can get up here. Oh, yeah. I'm st still got it. How's everybody this morning? Two weeks to Christmas. Two weeks. Ah. You guys relax this weekend? No? We're good? All right. Hey, as you guys can see, we got them lining up. The 10 by 20s. We got two weeks. We're supposed to be able to... Uh, how many, how many more we got to do, Luke? Uh, we got, I think, six. Six? Wow. So we can get six, and then we get our 12 by 20s, and we really don't know. The 12 by 20s just got a shed roof, and we roll. So hopefully we'll get them things done by the, by the end of the year. We're hoping, right? It rained all weekend. You guys know the whole big push is this, dro this grove out here. <coughs> Nobody in the world thinks we can get it done. Yump's been working in the rain, working in the mud. He normally never does that, but he knows we got to get it in, you know. So we're good. All right. Hey, I'm going to try something a little bit different. What, you got something? You look like you had to say something. <laughs> yeah, all right. You're going to get out of doing the stretching. Um, hey, I just want to tell you I appreciate you guys for what we're doing here and, and building and working. And I was uh, thinking over the weekend about what we do and you guys ever seen Wolf of Wall Street? That movie, Wolf of, Wolf of Wall Street movie? I don't know if you ever seen it. All right, well, Caprio, he had, a, he had this huge law firm, right? Or he had his brokerage. And he had all his guys, like right here, you guys selling stocks. Men are making money and everything. Of course, they're the most immoral guys in the whole world. And he brought strippers in. He brought drugs in. He brought all this stuff to motivate the guys to keep them going. And I thought... Okay, I need to flip that around a little bit. How can we, how can we motivate you guys just to make you feel good that, you, that you're working here, right? And that you want to come here and work. And of course, everything behind what they were doing was just money. It's just about making money. Well, we're the same way. We want to make a ton of money too. And I think we're going to make a whole lot more money than what we are if we continue to do what we're doing and keep an eye on the market and keep an eye on being cre creative and doing really good solid work. I mean, I think you guys can really make some money to where I like I love to have everybody in here own one of these houses, right? Everybody in here that works and stays with this company can own your own house. I mean, that right there is I don't know what it'd be worth. Um, we sell them for 30, 40,000 bucks, it's 10 by 20s. You fix them up, they're worth double that, right? That's that's some money, man. And Maybe every couple, three or four years, I told Tom, everybody gets another one. By the time you're out of here in 15 years from now, you got a re residual income. Three or four of these houses are rent out, you're set for life. I mean, you make, may you make if you do it on an Airbnb, you make 40, 50,000 a year. Think about that. That's where we can go with this. And my mind is to, to me, I think it's a shame for you all not to have a home and you work for a home building company. Right? It's a shame for you not to have a decent house to live in if you don't, if when you live, you work here like this. Are we there financially yet? No, but I will definitely tell you when we are. And I don't really care to give you a printout of my checking account in there, but you'd probably go home and go get another job if you knew what it was like. <laughs> All right? Because it's thin ice, man. We're, but we're doing it. You know, think about being in business. It's like you get up, go out your screen door and you leave your house, and you got a broke down truck, and you're gonna say, hey, how can I, how can I make a living today? And you ain't got a job, right? How can I make money by the time the sun sets today? And that's what I was faced with. So I walked out the door and I thought, what can I do to make a living? I don't have any money. <clears throat> And just an idea popped in my head <clears throat> about scrap lumber. And I'd been, Amanda told me about these tiny homes. And I didn't have any money. I didn't have any building materials to build them out of. And I went over there to Oak Salvage. And I just, salvage yard. 
And I remember going over there doing some side work, and I seen a, he had crap piled everywhere. Y'all ever been over there before? He's got stuff piled up everywhere. And I said, hey, if you let me clean up that yard, can I keep anything worthwhile, worth anything? You've already culled through it. Can I keep it? You keep whatever you want. He said, but you take everything out of here. I don't want nothing left. You don't leave any junk. So I had to take all of his crappy stuff. Tom was there. Well, he seen what I brought in, man. It was piles and piles. I bet I had enough wood to fill this whole building, and three quarters of it was rotten. Terrible. And he let me use his truck. So I had no money. I didn't have a, really a good truck. He let me use his truck. I got all the wood for free. And then I had a buddy of mine you'll see come through here, Wayne Justice. He's about 12 years older than me. And he's like a brother to me when I first came here. And he, he loaned me a, a sawzall and a skill saw. And I built everything out of those two tools. There I had a buddy, had, had a trailer over in Jeff City in the field, broke down flats, everything. It had been sitting there four or five years, and I remembered he had that trailer. I remember it was 16 foot, and I called him. He was in Florida, and I said, hey, about that old trailer you got? He said, man, go get it, whatever you want to do with it. It was broke down, God. <clears throat> Finally got it pulled over to the house, and I started building a tiny home. I never looked inside a tiny home, didn't know how to build a tiny home, didn't know how to, didn't know anything about nothing, 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 didn't call anybody, didn't read any books, I didn't get online, I didn't go visit a tiny home, I just built it the way I thought I should build it, according to my experience. I was a builder by then, of course. I built a ton of log homes and all that. So what I'm just trying to tell you all this little story <clears throat> is that I had an advantage because I, I didn't have cancer. I didn't have a broke leg. I wasn't paralyzed from the neck down. I didn't have, I was fortunate, <clears throat> and that's called unmerited faith or grace. It's grace. Grace is unmerited favor. It's like, why are you guys standing here this morning and not broke down in a wheelchair or in the oncology department in the hospital this morning? You don't know why. You don't know why you can still see with your eyes and you can still work this morning with your body moving that saw. You don't know why you're here. Because you could have been in a car accident on the way here. Right? That's called unmerited favor. And we don't know why. It's just a gift. It's just what happens. So I had the gift that I could walk and talk and I actually could think. And I didn't have enough trauma in my life that I could actually think clearly to do something. So that's something you just don't know why. You just got it. Right? So I just wanted to tell you that that's what this place was built from. Walking out that screen door, and what am I going to do today? So now, eight years later, we got almost 100 people working here, and we got homes going from coast to coast, right? And that's, that's it, done. I'm no, I'm no smart guy. My vocabulary is very limited. I can't, I don't have big words. And, uh, and my only thing, my only thing, I think the only talent I have, and I told you before, and like Tom says it, Tom's the same way. We just won't quit. We won't stop. We will keep going. And when you get up in the morning and you don't feel like it, you keep going. You keep going. So I want to do something this morning, just a little bit of stretching. And then I want to do something for you. I'm going to show you a little bit. Every morning I get up, about four or five days a week, I get up and I do this yoga routine. And my back used to be where I get up in the morning, I couldn't hardly, oh, I'd be getting to the toilet like this, Right? As soon as I do this, if you guys want to, after work, you can talk to me about it. You just, your little yoga routine, it's a stretching, really. My back is completely, 100% perfect. And I'm telling you, it works. It works every single time. You young guys, I wish I'd have started it 40 years ago. But um, I'm going to do just a couple little ones that are modified. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So get where you can, guys. All you need to do is stretch your legs this far apart. That's all you need to do right now. Just take one step ahead. Like one step straight ahead. Okay, just one step, and now you got your feet, both of them like this. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're just going to raise your hands straight up, but step straight ahead, and then bend that first leg. You're going to go down in the front, right there in the front. Now just go to where it, it now some guys, get, I go really low, but you don't have to go that low, because you're going to get out of balance, right? And you put all that weight on that front leg. And then you lean back and keep your arms up as high as you can. 
Just hold that. Perfect. God, this is a beautiful picture right here. All right, then straighten that leg. Put your arms down and do the other leg. We're going to do two of these things, all right? Yeah. Arms up, bend that leg in the front. Of course, as you get better, you get lower in your stance like this. And all that weight is on that front leg, and you're going to start shaking. And it's going to hurt. Now, if you can, pull your arms down, hold them, and then go back up. Justin, get these guys. Film these guys, not me. All right, and straighten that leg up. All right, I'm going to go back to the other leg. Now, this time, the front leg, again, strut, and then you're going to twist that back leg so you almost got a T. See his foot? Yes. That foot. Now, you're going to keep that foot still. You're going to twist. Put your legs up. And then go down. You'll feel a little bit more pull in your back. And then twist your torso just a little bit. This right here is what will make your back feel better. Now what I'd usually do is I'll move my arms a little bit because i got a bad shoulder and it works my shoulder a little bit. But I'll count to 30 and I'll hold that thing. And the stronger you get, you'll get lower and lower in your stance. So come out of that. Arms down. Switch your feet. <clears throat> that left foot just twist it again, just like that, left foot, arms up, torso straight ahead as much as you can, and then lower that leg down. Just go six inches. You guys, some guys can go lower, and then lean back. But make sure that torso is straight ahead, and that foot in the back is planted straight down. And just hold that. Of course, I always lay my arms down a little bit. And it's a balancing, so when you guys are balancing, Believe it or not, all your stomach muscles, your shoulder, everything's trying to keep you straight up and down. Lean back, straighten that leg. Awesome. Yeah. Now there's three or four more exercises I do that combine that together and it'll twist that back and it gets you stronger. <clears throat> and uh, that's what your back needs every day. If you guys want to during the day, do those couple little exercises at lunch halfway through the day because when you're standing all day, you get tight, right? So anyway, that's what helped me. All right. You guys good? All right. So what I want you guys to do is uh, your supervisors, any kind of t attendance, who's here, who ain't here, so we can keep track of stuff. And uh, Christmas is in two weeks, guys. They're gonna have a, we're going to have a Christmas party here Christmas Eve. All right, the ladies in this community, they've invited all you guys. I told them we could use this building. So probably from the siege tower back, we might pull a couple houses out. I'm going to put some of these lights and hang them, hang them up in the ceiling up there before Christmas Eve. But they wanted to invite all you guys to the party. If you guys want to come, you guys can, I don't Christmas Eve is kind of weird. You probably want to stay home. But if you have nowhere to go, We'll be here all night, probably late. So you guys don't have anywhere to go, nothing to do. Come on by here. I know Christmas Eve can be a, a grand time and it can be the worst time, right? So you guys are more than welcome to come by. Anything, Tom? Good. We're good. All right, guys. Thank you. Let's have a great day. All right. What? Me, me and some biker buddies got together this weekend and hung out and drank yeah. some beers and whatnot. Bikers are covered in tattoos. Yeah. An 8x16, a portable tattoo shop. No. You can take off skirts and you can do, you put the saddle out, you put the things on top. Yeah. You got all the power you need. Yeah. All you do is pull up into a vacant lot, set up shop. Now you need a tattoo, tattoo artist. They see your videos, they go. Because, I mean, a tattoo artist got to have a building. So he's got that first month's rent, deposit. So you think go to these, bill. go to these shows and all this stuff. They travel, bikers yeah. travel. Imagine you just got follow the biker crowd. Twenty-five thousand bikers in Sturgeon that pass through there a week. That's a small number. Twenty-five thousand. I would say a hundred thousand people go. Yeah, that's once a year, right? Like once no, a year, more than that. Do the Sturgeon thing. So you got a portable tattoo shop. You can go to Sturgeon 
probably make enough money to sustain you for the year. Yeah. And then they got another rally. Bikers do rallies a lot. You know what we ought to Picnics. do? We ought to do one and, and color it like uh, Harley Davidson colors and send it to Sturgeon. I'm telling you, man. That, that a portable cool. tattoo shop. You got a bathroom in there. Yeah. Eight by 16 has got plenty of room for a tattoo Oh, yeah. Bed. yeah. You got the solar on top, so you got all the juice you need. Let's do it. We need to go to these big shop. biker rallies down here in Daytona, Sturgeon. Everywhere. All that. They have rallies everywhere. My band's played in rallies from here to Bangladesh. God. Or, you talk about what are you money? doing Christmas Eve? You got family? I'm going home for Christmas Eve. Where's Virginia. home? Virginia. 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 Got it. Hey. I got to go down here to the courthouse at 9 o'clock. I got mm -hmm. a court date. I got to just go down there and show them proof before I got into and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That long, yeah. Okay. I just want to mention that. Okay, okay buddy. Wondering. You're right. Good. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, man. Yep. I just got three quick things to run by you. Yeah. The lady called about that uh, preparedness summit thing in Florida. Do you want me to green light that with Tim?